So here we are, our three radios, 800, 450, 150, VHF, UHF, 800, 700 megahertz radios. Transmission line, going to one diplexer box, again from the company Sticko. So on the 800 megahertz span is 760 to 896. On the UH band is 380 to 512. And the VHF is, I, I would imagine, 150 to 174. It's been kind of scraped off. So all three of these radios are going to go into this device here and share one antenna here. There's my antenna cable going to my tripod. And this is the antenna. It looks like a uh, sable round from a tank. Okay, I got most of the configuration all assembled here. This one right here is a VHF antenna and it's going to run my APRS uh, beaconing system. That's an amateur thing that could, you know, locate where you're at from the computer or whatever, or the internet. Uh, nice little hobby that I do and my family could track me wherever I, I am when I'm traveling. Uh, gives them peace of mind and also, you know, let them know where I'm at. So if something happens, they, they could notify somebody where's the last place I was at. So that's that. And it's hooked up to that radio right there. It's, like I said, it's an amateur radio thing and uh, cheap, cheap old parts. This port also serves as a testing port for me. So uh, if I need to put a radio on this for some reason, uh, I could easily get to the inside the cab and do that and use this port for that purpose. There's my tri-bander antenna there for public safety, which I'm going to hook up three radios to. The antenna behind that, I'm using a VHF antenna. I'm not using the long whip, low band uh, VHF antenna because I don't transmit on it that much. When I do, I could just go into the back and put the proper antenna on it. And the repeaters that's on this particular antenna uh, are powerful enough to where I could pick it up with this antenna. And like I said, it, I'm going, I'm trying for a low profile here. I don't want a big whip antenna that's a pain in the ass to go into garage complexes and stuff like that. These are pretty flexible. They could uh, bend and all that. Then the, the antenna way in the back is my amateur dual band antenna. Uh, for my uh, amateur radio here in the cab so four ports but within these four ports I got one two three four five six radios in this guy excessive I know extreme I know but you're talking to a geek here uh, with access to stuff but the main thing was this little doohickey over here let's see how that's working so right now I got it hooked up to the uh, VHF uh, port here and I'm measuring the, the antenna with this here and there it is. Wow, I'm getting, I can actually tune into amateur band here. Right there is 144 at minus 14 exactly, 115. Uh, I mean 15 dBs of, of attenuation of return loss. Very good. So let me go up in the band. I'm going way up, way up. I'm doing pretty good in the federal frequencies there. And then some of the other agency frequencies there. So I'm tuned in pretty good on VHF there. Kick ass. And if you notice, 450 is right here. It's flat line. This line here represents, uh, represents nothing being there. So if I transmit on this UHF area here, it's not going to go into my VHF side or 800 side. Right now I'm on the port on the UHF side, so that's what you're seeing come in and out. So there's the UHF port, and that looks like that's looking damn good. Right there it's at 140, no, I'm sorry, that's 448 with a return loss of 17 dBMs. That's pretty damn good. And 
and I go up to 500 I'm still getting 16 I'm not gonna go into the 500s but that's damn good there 440 let's go 438 still damn good so I could do quite a bit with this band right here with this antenna system I could do amateur and public safety frequencies and it's flat line there no VHF and it's flat right here on the 800 700 so this frequency will not affect these two radios and vice versa so here's the 800 megahertz range right here so it's going from 700 around there to 8 that's 940 right there in this line right here and I got a minus 16 is covering that whole span right there that is freaking kick-ass so my little theory here is going to work out really well uh, this setup ideally is for like command post or you know uh, buildings and stuff like that I just brought it inside the vehicle here so I could have the same thing I could cram three more radios in there using one antenna port that'll leave me with other ports there for me to dink around with and this is gonna work out really well uh, it's expensive 500 for this box right here alone to be able to do that and that antenna on top was 168 something dollars uh, there is another version for scanners that you guys could use to you know put your scanners up there so you could you know uh, receive those frequencies efficiently instead of one band you could do like three major bands so so far I showed you a bunch of high-speed low drag stuff and some goofy ideas that I had in mind to uh, sort of consolidate a lot of this crap that I'm putting on here and uh, it's, it's working out good it tested out with the big high dollar test equipment and everything the theory is sound so far everything that I set to mind is actually coming to fruition here but I want to bring it back down to show the beginners out there that yeah all this is crazy you know geek stuff that that's you know expensive and and I, mind you I don't own none of this stuff none of this stuff is mine except for the ham radios but uh, everything else is is put together and it looks complicated especially when it's all discombobulated like this but like I said in the beginning of the video all you really need to get started is a good multimeter and a good watt meter for comms now I'm gonna use a, a VHF radio, a radio to test the antenna system this is going through that uh, multi-agency antenna that I put on top there the three ports into one with the wideband antenna on top and the frequency that I'm using is 151 point something megahertz and this here is a slug for VHF there's various slugs for various bands like UHF high band low band HF uh, for this particular testing we're gonna do VHF and I'm just gonna do one frequency uh, they have other models where where there's like a switch here and there's more settings here more display data here where it factors in for for the discrepancies of uh, the bands because there is a difference when you change bands and stuff but that I don't have that equipment and I can't really show you no nah. but for for now this bird watt meter like I said has been in the industry for decades and we still use it today this is my go-to final uh, and is all end all the dog is out that's why she's screaming anyways let's transmit uh, the radio is rated for 50 watts let's see what it what it brings oops okay start again okay forward power so it's going from to the radio out the antenna port into this inline watt meter out the meter and into the uh, antenna system so if there's any trouble there this should show it okay we're looking at 49 watts there so that's damn good if I turn this dial the other way you see the power the transmit power is going that way towards the antenna now we're going to 
measure the power being reflected back just by turning this knob here the knob the, the arrows pointing back towards the radio if there is if there is any damage with the antenna the cabling the box this will show some power being reflected back into the radio and that and that power being reflected back is what damages your radio uh, it also tells you if if your antenna or the system itself is tuned right so if you get any reflected power that antenna or the system itself is not tuned for that frequency very important so I'm gonna go ahead and transmit I don't get nothing it looks like maybe less than a quarter watt the thing is not deflecting at all just a uh, hair and that's good what you want to see is 10 percent uh, no better. less than 10 percent being reflected back so if this radio was transmitting 50 watts and and the reflected power is 5 watts that's the borderline cutoff right there still good but not great and if 6 watts reflected power you got some problems in the in the antenna system here now that was 151 I'm gonna check the higher band of the VHF range so I'm talking about 168 so I'm gonna turn tune into a federal frequency here so this is a federal frequency somewhere up there it's 167 dot something and we're gonna check the higher extreme of this band here the higher extreme is 174 megahertz so okay forward power is around 50 watts full deflection the slug here is rated for 50 watts so full deflection is the full 50 watts we're gonna go back reflect the power transmit that's maybe half a watt if that a quarter of a watt that's damn good this system here is working out really well and that's the final proof that would convince me of that case I like the older analog uh, test equipment uh, when, when I see something that doesn't correspond right to what it should read like I fall back to the old stuff to make sure before I start you know troubleshooting any, any further this here with that reflected and forward power let you know that the antenna is doing great that means that means your radio should be receiving really good as well perhaps the circuitry is damaged on your receiver here so you would need test equipment like that to replicate that signal in a low level to find out the specs but in the meantime 85 percent of the, the troubleshooting can be done with this and a, and a uh, voltmeter and this is hell of a lot less expensive than that piece of gear there this is probably around in the 300 dollar area but you could probably find other manufacturers that's just as good well there she is the only sore thumb that you see up there is this antenna right here uh, you just can't you just can't beat physics there's three radios attached to that antenna right there actually two for now a third one will come later and uh, the rest of them are small whips and at night they nearly disappear in the daytime yeah I'm gonna get some funny looks at nighttime I'm just gonna blend in and then there's the center console there so this radio and this radio are tied together VHF 800 the UHF is gonna go in this spot right here and that's on a later date I don't even have that gear yet it's gonna be an eBay purchase this radio is on its own antenna and this is on its own antenna and the APRS underneath the seat so that's one, two, three, four, five, and a future six on this vehicle here. Uh, three of them on one antenna and the rest are going to be in their perspective spots. Alright guys, GorillaCom going 10-10. So I'm not to be the one who have to stand